Dr. Rolifson um, is a scientist who is known for championing pastoralism. Uh, and she found um, and she found uh, the Raika people whose way of life was under threat because of their de dependence on on camels and and she decided to help and and this beautiful journey of hers lands lands us what we're talking about today which is cheese and how um, she's using cheese as a tool um, to kind of bring back uh, revive this um, revive the camel population and save the camels and the culture uh, of the people in, in Rajasthan, in the Raika community. So uh, over to you, Dr. Rolifson. Thank you very much. Good evening. It's wonderful to be here and to um, share, yes, the potential of camel cheese. I really, it's not an exaggeration. I'm getting more and more convinced that the camel, the cheese is actually the solution to uh, save the camels of Rajasthan. And I'll uh, going to start with a little, um, a little, a short movie that gives you the background of. I want to show you a little movie. It's not there. Um, that's too bad. Then I, I'll just have to tell you the story. Okay. So, um, so the background is that I came here uh, almost thirty years ago to study camels, and I came across this, the Raika community at that time, they were not known, but they totally fascinated me as a veterinary doctor um, with a love for camels because they had such an intimate relationship with their camels. Like they were never using them for meat. They weren't uh, selling the milk. They were basically just breeding male camels to sell them at the Pushka fair as transport animals. And they have this this really, you know, this close relationship and they talk to their camels and they can control, you know, a single person can control about 50 camels and they listen to the commands and they are very, very friendly. Uh, these camels, they, if you stand among them, they come and they, um, they kiss you basically if they're well treated camels. So I was totally fascinated at the time, but I was also exposed to um, a lot of the problems they were telling me our camels are dying and uh, there's no grazing areas for them and uh, there's a disease and can you help us so this actually uh, kind of changed me from an academic to a more like an activist and I started an NGO to, to uh, support the Raika and to support pastoralists in general. So for a long time we were just uh, you know providing camel health care we were um, fighting with the foresters for access to grazing in the forest and uh, and all these things but it didn't really help at all then in the early 2000s camels were actually begun to be slaughtered uh, it was it was something that wasn't talked about because it it went totally against the ethics of the raika community but still they were sold at pushka and then from there they they went to Hyderabad and different places and, and they were used for meat and, but it was somebody something nobody talked about. So the camel population went down, not because of the slaughter actually, but because there wasn't enough grazing uh, grounds for the camels. The young people didn't want to breed camels because there was no income. And then when the Rajasthan government finally uh, found out about this, Chief Minister, she actually said we have to do something and she declared the camel state animal. And this was in 2014 and we thought now the camel is going to be helped and there's going to be special programs to support the camel breeders and so on. But that's actually not what happened. What happened was that a law was put into place that stopped uh, that made it illegal to take camels out of Rajasthan and almost everything was um, forbidden that you can do with camels. You, you weren't allowed to castrate them, you couldn't uh, put a nose peg in their nose, all kinds of things were prohibited. And this was really unfortunately the kind of the death knell for the camel because early on they had, the Raika had made all their income once a year at Pushka where they were selling the female camels, the, the, where they were selling the male camels. And suddenly, so this market kind of totally fell apart. The buyers weren't coming anymore because they couldn't take the camels out of Rajasthan legally. And um, so since 2014-15, the situation has really gone very bad. 
So the, the, the only way of actually, you know, if you want to save the camel, if you want to save the culture, the people need to be in a position to make a living from keeping camels. So we started different things. We made a little factory to make camel poo paper. We set up a wool unit to uh, process the camel wool. But the big potential really is in the, in the camel milk. Here in India, there's actually no uh, tradition of drinking camel milk. And um, I mean, for 20 years, I listened to people saying camel milk is disgusting. Ooh, uh, it's inedible, etc. Et but then actually things changed because it became known that a lot of autistic children respond really well uh, to camel milk. And an American mother of an autistic child, she's actually written a book about this. So this kind of filtered through to India and we were getting uh, requests from parents of autistic children to send them camel milk. So we set up this uh, dairy, uh, India's first camel dairy, the Kumbhagat camel dairy, where we can process about 200 liters of milk per day. And what we do is we, um, pasteurize the milk, we put it into small bottles, 200 uh, ml, and then we uh, deep freeze it, and then we send it in ice boxes direct to the end consumer, by bus usually. And um, so this has, been, this has been going on, but it's, it's actually a very difficult business uh, because uh, the, the infrastructure in India is just not there and the logistics are really difficult. So it's very expensive. Uh, it makes the milk very expensive uh, for the consumer and for us, it's almost impossible to make a profit. But the good thing is that earlier, it was also thought one cannot make cheese from camel milk. The camel milk is actually very different from cow's milk. In a way, it's much better. It has uh, different proteins than camel milk, than cow's milk. It has very high iron content, 10 times as much as cow's milk. Uh, it has uh, various proteins in it that uh, raise uh, your body's immune system, but it didn't, it doesn't curdle. You can't make uh, curd from it and you couldn't make cheese from it. But fortunately for us, a Danish company in the about eight years ago, or so they developed a special enzyme, a special rennet uh, with which you can curdle the camel milk. And this uh, rennet was actually first experimented with in Kenya for African pastoralists. So when we heard that, you know, it is now possible to make camel milk, we actually managed to get two camel, uh, two cheese experts uh, to us, one from Austria and a lady from Denmark who's been living in Kenya. And she's the one who uh, tried out making cheese from camel milk among the uh, nomads in Kenya. So they both uh, came over here several times and we've been working on um, developing cheeses and um, it's been very successful. The cheese is absolutely delicious. It doesn't need much of a cool chain. In fact, we've made one kind of cheese, feta cheese, and it doesn't need, it's conserved in oil and it doesn't need a refrigerator at all. You can keep it for months no refrigeration necessary, it's absolutely um, delicious. So now we, we, the, the interest is really uh, increasing in, in camel cheese and I just wish I could let you taste some. Uh, I'm just gonna show you what we have. We have um, three kinds of uh, cream cheese. We have um, red pepper, green pepper, <laughs> And we have uh, black pepper, and we have, uh, and this is our feta cheese in oil and the spices, uh, with Mediterranean spices, uh, garlic, rosemary, um, thyme, uh, in olive oil or in um, mustard oil. 
And um, yes, I just wish I could uh, <laughs> uh, let you try the cheese, but unfortunately I can't. But the, the, uh, the interesting thing about the, the cheese is that it probably, because it's not processed at a high temperature, it's processed at um, 40 degrees, 50 degrees, which is less than the temperature we use for pasteurization. So it means all the good, you know, the healing components of uh, the camel milk, they are retained in the cheese. And we haven't made any experiments yet, but I believe the autistic children, they might respond very well to the camel cheese um, as well. So we're trying to build it up as a, um, also, I mean, except for, apart from the medicinal value, we also want to make it like Rajasthan's uh, heritage health food. And um, it's, we're gaining momentum and uh, I, I can see something really great happening.